We are in Champions League, man. That was my dilly next question. Dilly dong, come on. Into Sheringham and so sure and funny. I will love it if we beat them. Love it. This is the Modern Soccer Coach Podcast with Gary Kearney. Welcome to the Modern Soccer Coach Podcast. My name is Gary Kernin. Joining me for this episode is Edu Rubio. He is the under-23 and U18 head coach at MK Dons. UEFA Pro license and is working in the professional game, but has worked at all the youth levels, grassroots levels, and great insight into the type of coach required at each one. So that's what we're going to look at today. We'd love your thoughts, as always, at Gary Kernin on Twitter, at Gary Kernin on Instagram. This podcast is brought to you by Techni Football, the training app for individual players, teams and clubs. Players can train on their own when and where they want, while coaches can challenge, support and track their progress. I would highly recommend coaches and players download the Techni Football app for a free trial or go to technifootball.com and use the promo code MSC2019 for 10% off. More about Techni Football at the halfway point. Here is Edu. Enjoy. Edu, thank you so much for joining me on the Modern Soccer Coach podcast. Really excited to have you on. Thank you so much. No, thank you so much for having me on. Okay, so I just said before we start recording there, the old the old cliche will require a better version of me. Um, we're going to try and look at that and, and kind of align it with your growth and journey as a coach. So... Uh, you've worked at a number of levels, and as you've moved up the levels, you've obviously achieved the highest level of, of licensing as well. So I want to look at all these levels and kind of see what what you feel and what you felt that you learned and what you feel that young coaches require at that level. So let's start at the grassroots level. What do you think are the basic requirements for coaches that are working with the under-10 age group and the younger players? I think in that level, uh, to be honest, this is one of those like um, understanding yourself in terms of whether you've got the passion and whether you've got the the desire to coach and to give back to to your players. And um, I think probably like in any other industry, but obviously I wouldn't dare to talk about other industries because I don't know that much. I do know about football, and that's why I'm going to obviously um, stay on in in my talk. And in our industry, I think it's quite clear that. Uh, this is not just a job, and this it's not like about titles. It's about whether you've got a, a real passion to coach and a real passion to 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 um, educate and to be part of a team. Um, and 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 so for me, in the grassroots level, as obviously it's not very well paid, uh, and you do obviously like in food, like in the top and sociable hours and so on. I think if you don't have the passion and if you don't have the desire to really coach and to contribute, um, then obviously you want to stay in football for a long term and for a long time. So I, I think it's as simple as that. I think it's whether, it, it, for me, in that first phase, I, I kind of um, realized that, yes, I've got the passion, I've got the desire, and this is my world, and I really like it, and I, you know, and, and I really uh, thrive through all the days and, and the coaching and I don't mind the hours and so on. So that was the first stage. Um, as simple as asking my question, do I really like this? And this is, is this really like, really for me? And that's probably what I did discover in, in the grassroots. You know, if you were hiring a, a U10 coach for, for MK Dons or any, you know, not even a professional academy, but any, any club looking for, you, for, uh, for young players in that age group, what would you ask or require that or uh, that young coach or that coach to be able to deliver on the field? It's funny you ask because obviously I don't do that anymore in my current job as an under 23s head coach. But obviously I used to be head of academy coaching, and that was one of my jobs. I mean, to to hire coaches for for um, different age groups, and and for me it was all about um, has he got or has she got the passion, uh, the desire. Um, do they have any educational background, um, um, any teaching qualifications? Um, are they intrigued in the psychology aspects of football? Are they intrigued in um, pedagogy, um, different coaching and different t- teaching styles? 
do they like reading? Do they like researching? Um, are they, you know, uh, do, do they like uh, communicating? Are they good communicators? Um, have they done anything in their in their life to obviously expose themselves to to the opportunity to be good communicators? Doesn't matter if they're only 19, 20, 21 years of age. I mean, but have they done anything? Have they gone to a leader camp or anything? So those were the kind of things. I mean, it was more around um, discovering a little bit about their personality, whether they were going to be good educators um, to deal with, obviously, under nines and under tens. So in terms of their exercises or their ability to, you know, opposed, unopposed, all that there is irrelevant if the personality piece isn't there? Um, It's not irrelevant, but that would be stage two. Uh, for me, I hire the person more than the coach. Um, I, I've always said that, you know, if someone has got the passion and the desire and is a good learner um, and they, 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 they do the, you know, they, they are happy to be exposed to learn, um, anything is learnable, anything. I mean, I, I believe that nothing is impossible. Therefore, you know, that would be a stage two. But stage one, if you don't want to learn it, and if you don't have the passion, and if you don't have the desire, and if you know you don't really um, know how to communicate to children and how to motivate them uh, and how to connect with them, um, I think whatever you want to teach is not going to really go into their heads um, because obviously the number one priority is can I connect with my players? Um, so though, that was a stage one, but there is a stage two, of course. Um, do they have a B license in coaching, or are they, you know, have they had any background of, of coaching themselves or playing? Um, have they done any teaching qualifications? Have they gone to any CPD events provided by the county FA or the FA? You know, obviously those things were very important to me, but that would be obviously stage two. Moving on up to then academy level, uh, what's your thoughts on? when winning should become important and then how should that be, you know, start to be taught to young players on and off the field? Um, I've always believed, I mean, I, you know, I don't have a problem to say this because, I, I mean, for a number of years, I've always gone into different um, CPD events and different courses. And it seems like when we talk about winning and development, it has to be detached one from another. And, and, and it's a very, like, a kind of taboo uh, kind of um, conversation. I think winning is an intrinsic motivation from anyone. I mean, I've never, you know, if, if you go to any playground in any school and, you know, the children are playing any sport or any kind of game, everyone wants to win. So I don't think winning and the desire to be competitive and to and to want to win is a bad element. I mean, I, I think, I think you know, that's, that's actually a, a good thing. Now, so I would say winning has to be there at any level. Now, it's, it's, it's how you teach the winning and how you uh, me- measure the winning and how you measure success and how you understand success, what it really is relevant to me. So what I'm trying to say is that, um, of course, I will always install um, a nature, the intrinsic motivation of winning, and I will always say that it is important. However, I'm, I'll have to work on a priority level. So I wouldn't say that winning is top priority with under nines, tens, elevens, twelves. It is a starting probably to be a bigger priority when you go into under sixteens, under seventeens, eighteens, because they are closer to the first team. And we are in an environment, and especially we are talking about academies in an elite environment, in which winning is important because obviously it comes to a point where you went into the first team and, and you compete for three points. But I always think that winning is always a relevant thing to teach as long as you understand that you work in a priority level and it will never be top priority when you deal with children. But it will start to be important when you are 16, 17 and so on. Completely agree. Completely agree with you. What are ways then that a coach can teach it without without getting caught up of it or without prioritising it? What are ways that maybe they can drip feed competitiveness or teaching how to win? I, I think for me, um, obviously, I'm not, you know, I'm not talking the truth because there isn't a truth. I mean, and there isn't just a way to do things. But my way, and, and, and the way I see it, is focusing as simple as focusing on the process more than the outcome. So, so for me, winning has to be a consequence of um, trying to improve my two or three key factors, which I've identified as, you know, the main 
contributors of obviously improving my game and um, working on um, ha understanding how the team plays and the identity and the philosophy of the of the team and the club um, obviously analyzing the opposition um, so all those things are the things and for me it's daily improvements and, and, and making sure that I stay fit and happy and healthy. <laughs> I mean, those are the main things that are, I think a player has to focus on and I think a coach has to reinforce to the players and the environment and then the consequence will be that that player will become more competitive, the team will become more competitive and the wins will come. Um, now, if you only focus on the winning, then probably you are forgetting about all the elements relevant to the process and you might not even get to the win. <laughs> and, and, and so for me, it's as simple as when I'm coaching um, in a daily basis is about um, focusing on the topic, making sure that we work on that topic, making sure that we work on those key factors of that topic, making sure that you give relevant information to the players according to the topic, to the key factors and to their own individual needs. And then as a consequence, we will become more competitive and hopefully we will win more games. Let's talk about facilitating discussions through questioning. A difficult strategy with most players, never mind the, you know, the younger players. Whenever you're dealing with younger players who maybe don't have the base of knowledge to give you answers back that you probably want, that you hear on Monday Night Football, that the coach thinks that they should be giving them. But you know, yeah. what's your thoughts on... But, that, but, but to that, I would say that it's obviously you need to level your expectations. I mean, uh, I think the players will always give you very good answers what they might not give you is the answers you are looking for. <laughs> but then whose who's problem is that? Is it yours or the players? Um, that's what I would say to the coaches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's, I heard you on, a, on an interview uh, with, when you were talking with the coach Emmanuel and, and you were talking about that, you know, the importance of planning your questions alongside you. Yeah. Can, you can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, obviously it, it, it is important that... Um, you know, as a coach, you know your topics, you know your identity and philosophy, but you also try to understand your players. And then you create an environment in which you are very open and you obviously um, try to pose the questions that you know that the players are going to be comfortable with to start with and then to start challenging them. And obviously, it's also the timing of your questions. So, for example, um, if we have a video analysis session and you're talking about, you know, the, I don't know, the playing up from the back, then it's when it's relevant to ask those questions. Now, if you are in the middle of a training session and you are um, doing just a, I don't know, a, a counter-attack um, game, of course, you are not going to ask about uh, playing up from the back because the players in that moment are focusing on something else. So I think it's just using your common sense. And I think, obviously, you leveling your expectations mm. according to the age and according to their knowledge and according to um, obviously their experiences. So for me, I think it's very important to understand your group and, and work on empathy and compassion. Um, when as a coach, you, you understand that you are here to help and support and when you understand that your place is to um, help the players to uh, maximize their own potential, rather than teach them anything. It's more about, for me, it's not about teaching them loads of things. For me, it's about more helping them to maximize their own potential and helping them to discover their own gift. Um, is when, obviously, the questions then uh, become more fluid and is when the environment becomes, you know, with a better energy and, and the answers get out there. Um, sometimes it's just also the manners that you use uh, rather than threatening, just obviously asking in, in a nice way. I mean... You know, I think everyone will give you a good answer if, if you make them feel good and comfortable and if, if you make them feel that they've got an opportunity to, uh, to express their truth, their opinion and their feelings and their thinking without being compromised and without being judged. We'll take a quick break here to let you know about one of the best and most efficient training tools that a player can have available at their fingertips. Now they can train on their own or you can motivate players too with the Techni Football app. Created by Yael Averbush, an experienced professional and national team player, Techni Football is used throughout the US and in over 45 countries. Players are guided through the individual and technical sessions with video and written instruction. They can track their progress and compete with others on leaderboards while coaches can monitor their players. Download the Techni Football app for a free trial or go to technifootball.com where podcast listeners can get 10% 
off using the promo code MSC2019. MSC2019. Back to Edu. I really wanted to ask you this one here. Whenever, you know, in your role at the minute and, and in the professional academies as well, whenever that stage of the player's development where it starts to become a job, when, I, when yeah. they start to become a professional, high standards, motivation, understanding how to use extra support, that daily process, how do you go about teaching this and supporting this without taking away from the love of the game? Um, well, I would say the higher standards and you know and everything else um, is is a given. I mean, it doesn't have to be just because you get paid and you're a professional. I mean, you do those things and you encourage those things because that's who you are as a person. Um, you know, I, I don't work hard and I don't try to do the best I can because I get paid. I do it because that makes me happy because um, that goes in line to my values. Um, Obviously, when the boys and the and the coaches get paid for it, obviously, what it if if anything, it creates a sense of accountability because obviously now you have to respond to an employer, and obviously that's that that, that I understand. But for me, not taking away the love for the game goes back into what we started the conversation with. Um, do I really like football? So when you are in grassroots level and you don't get paid <laughs> and you work lo- long hours and the facilities are not the best and you know sometimes you have to deal with certain things that you wouldn't deal with in a professional level um the qu- number qu- number one question is do i really enjoy this do i really like this and that's the same question we need to ask ourselves when we are in the professional level and if the answer is yes then what you need to try to do is to create an environment with your members of the staff and your players in which now we are on the grass now it's work but you can still work with a smile on your face and, and I don't like the idea of fun for the sake of fun, but I do like the idea of enjoyment and making sure that, you know, everyone there is, is motivated and, and just being human. I mean, do you need a break? No, as simple as that. I mean, asking them, listen, if we have a three-minute break, are we, get, are we gonna then work harder in the next exercise? Um, so it's just having that empathy and that ongoing communication with your members of the staff and your players to understand that when it's work, it's work, and we're here to work, but at the same time, we're here to help each other out, so we still enjoy it, and we still, you know, have a smile, a smile on, on our faces. And and I think there is no secret, and there is no um, secret ingredient to the recipe. I think it's as simple as you know, being human, being very authentic, and and having an ongoing communication with, an honest communication with your staff and your players. When you start working with the older age group and you know, senior players and you know, your U23s at the minute, when coaching begins to go beyond the pitch and go into leadership and communication skills, uh, yeah. what are the key ones that you've developed in recent years in terms of leadership skills that, that are really applicable to that age group and that level of players? As a coach? or As a or coach, what? yeah, as a as coach. A coach. Um, well, I, I, I would say for me, it's funny, I mean... Um, the more I stay in football and the more accountable I have to be, um, it's more about listening, listening, asking questions, uh, knowing, making sure that you don't impose things. Um, it, it's really funny because when I talk to other, other, other coaches and other people, I mean, it seems like, like we understand leadership as, well, if I'm the leader, I have to do this. And if I'm the leader, I have to make the final decision. And if I'm the leader, they expect me to be spot on, 100%. And, and he's like, no, no, listen, I am the leader, but I'm also a human being. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and I also need support from my members of the staff. And I also need support from the players. Because, yes, by being the leader, I am accountable. And, yes, I'm more than happy and prepared to obviously develop, you know, the rhino skin and that thick skin to go mm-hmm. and, and confront the media. And, I'm, you know, that's, that's not a problem. But in here... I mean, I'm just going to be very natural. So I think the, the, the skills I've developed as a leader have been just to have more understanding about myself, to have more compassion about myself, to have more empathy with myself. And therefore, I've become um, more empathetic to my players and, and my members of the staff and develop better listening skills and, you know, what we call that exquisite listening. 
I think it's as important as really good um, communication um, skills and really good, you know, understanding of who you are as a person and what are your strengths, what are your things to develop, and then make sure that you communicate that to your staff so they can help you. So then the end product is a better delivery for the players and so the players get the best out of everyone so i think it's as simple as a good understanding of yourself how can you be true to those values and those principles and still be a little bit pragmatic you know because winning is important at the professional level and is it ever difficult when you're when you're asked or when you're challenged to sacrifice certain ideals of the game um not really, because I would never sacrifice my values. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, uh, so, so no, I mean, I, I haven't been exposed to that kind of situation, if you like. Uh, because, no, because I, I don't know, it's like, you know, uh, for example, if, if keeping a player on the pitch is going to guarantee me the three, pl- the three points, but keeping that player on the pitch uh, means that, you know, his or her w- well-being is going to be, uh, you know, in doubt... I, I'll bring that player off um, because in the I always think about the long term. Um, as a coach, um, it's like you know that that kind of thing of you know you might lose a fight but not the battle. Uh, so so is I, I don't think sometimes sometimes you have to be a bit more like open minded and you have to see the bigger picture. And is like, well maybe dropping a few maybe dropping points today might actually. Because I've stuck to my values and because I've had that consistency in my honest approach and because I've shown my staff and my players that I really live my values, um, that in the long term, that might give us more points because they might be prepared to, you know, to work harder, to sacrifice, to, to, to do the same, to, to obviously, uh, you know, live their lives through their values. Um, so, no, I, I don't think, you know, I don't see it in a negative way. I don't think I've ever compromised my values for a win uh, because I've always thought that, you know, in the long term, I'll get more points and more winning. So I'll be more pragmatic, if mm-hmm. you like, uh, and I will and we'll go higher in the table by sticking to our values because um, the players, like any other person, have memory. <laughs> and if, you know, today you do something dodgy and you trip your own values to get the three points, and then in three months' time, you ask them to stick to your values, lads, or, you know, girls, if you're coaching a female team, uh, team um, they'll go like, hold on a minute, three months ago, you didn't stick to your values to get the three points. So why are you saying? And then you lose your um, your power as a leader. So, uh, and then you might actually lose more games, more points because of that, and potentially your job. <laughs> yeah. so, so actually being pragmatic, and, and giving you a very pragmatic answer, I think sticking to your values is actually the most pragmatic thing you can do. Wow. Some answer that. And then obviously I'm I'm gonna ask it anyway, but that that does that then extend to, you know, you show up on a on a Tuesday night, on a rainy Tuesday night on a bad pitch with your team and it's borderline unplayable. Do you still stick to your football values then, obviously through that there? Does it does it carry the same consistency? Well then then what you do is if you feel that um, it's going to be difficult to play in the same way, I mean, to be fair, to answer that, I, I should say first that um, there is always a plan B and a plan C. I mean, I've learned through my coaching career that even though I have a very, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of complete way of, of understanding football and, and so on, I've also developed an understanding that, that plan B, plan C is actually good because... Um, that shows adaptability and flexibility, and that's what you have to do in life. I mean, in life, you have to be flexible and adaptable because not everything goes ideal. Not everything goes according to plan. Um, and so that would be... So changing slightly the way you play just to work against the elements um, is fun by me. That goes in, in with my values. And But then it's how you sell it and how you believe it. Not you sell it, how you believe it. So are you changing your... Um, your style, because you think that that's the best way to maximize the potential of your players, to help them out, to showcase them, and then as a consequence to win, then you do it. But you don't do it 
through, no, no, I'm going to do it to win it. You know what I mean? It's how you, how you like anything in life, is a mindset of how you explain thing, things to yourself and how you explain things to your players. And then obviously you have to talk to your players first and say, listen, we are going to play in this way. What do you think? And how do you feel? And if they say, no, no, listen, we are going to stick to the way we play, then you go, you go ahead. Or if they say, no, let's be a bit more flexible today, then you can be a bit more flexible. So, but that would be with the, with the value of adaptability and flexibility, which is important as well. Look, staying on the topic of these values and your philosophy, was this something that you developed as a young coach or was this something that you have strengthened as you've got older? Um, I think I've strengthened as I've got older because I think those things go in, li- in, in line with, with who you are as a person. You know what I mean? I've... I've <sighs> How can I say this? So basically, I don't believe... I mean, it happens that Edu Rubio right now is a football coach. Um, but that's just a label. That's just a title. And that's just a job that I do right now. But that doesn't define me as a person. What defines me as a person are my values and the way I live my life and the way I talk to people and the way, you know, um, uh, you know I behave. And so the way I behave, I, I live my life and the way, you know, um, and my values, then will have an effect to who I am as a coach today because I, I happen to be a coach. <laughs> but maybe in 20 years' time, I happen to have another job and another, you know what I mean, within football, obviously, because I love football. But, but what I'm trying to say is that, no, it, it, it grows with you as a person because I don't think you can detach or, or differentiate between the person and the coach. And, you know what I mean, it, it, it's all link. I mean... So I, I, I don't let my job or my, my job description uh, define my person. I am who I am, and then obviously I coach who I am. <laughs> um, so you grow as a person. Uh, as, you get old, as I've got older, I've got a bit wiser in, in, in how I like things, a bit more patient, <laughs> a bit more understanding about myself, and therefore then you've got a better chance to understand others. So I would say, if anything, I would encourage any coach out there you obviously, you know, try to understand himself or herself first to then be able to understand others. Are there any areas that you've changed drastically from how you coach, either, you know, either on the pitch or off the pitch in, in your journey? Um, yeah, a little bit. Maybe, um, obviously, the use of video analysis. Um, also, um, understanding when to, you know, when to let the session flow. I think... As a young coach, I was very excited to step on the pitch and you know, and to kind of you know, give them loads of instructions and uh, and as you as you you know, um, grow in experience, you understand that sometimes less is more and sometimes it's better just to step in a couple of times um, and then you know make it really brief and and go through you know really specific key factors and then you can probably have video analysis to reinforce the message. Then I've, I've also grown a lot into more individual um, video analysis, uh, more into individual uh, talks than, than big team talks, because sometimes some information is relevant only for one person. So why, why would you, you know, uh, put the others <laughs> in that scenario when they can you know, work on something else while you're talking to the, that player? So yeah, I, I've changed a little bit on, on my approach in the coaching uh, manners and, and methods. And in terms of coach education, then, what are the biggest step ups from a license to pro license? Um, well, I, if you go from the basis that I don't, I, I'm, I'm one of those who obviously I think it's very important, very important to go through your um, coaching uh, qualifications. However, the coaching, the coaching qualifications will never define you. What will define you is what you do on a daily basis. Um, just because you are pro license doesn't mean that you are better than an A license, or just because you are an A license doesn't matter. That doesn't mean that you are worse than a pro license. That's to start with. Uh, it's just a qualification. I mean, sometimes it's just that you've invested the time and the money to go through your qualifications, and others didn't. But that doesn't mean that you are better than others. Um, so we all have our own um, obviously journeys, and we all compete against our own uh, journeys rather than anyone else's journey. But I think the biggest uh, differences is obviously that refining of the detail when you when you do the team talks, that refining of the detail of formations and systems, that understanding of the game management as a coach, um, 
uh, I think you know th that difference between the A and the Pro is more the management. I think as an A uh, license, you you are probably very qualified to have the enough knowledge to coach the game. But then, as a pro license, it gives you a, a bigger understanding of the management. It gives you a bigger understanding of the bigger picture, because obviously, then it's not just about um, your players. It's about your staff. It's about the club. It's about the club's vision. It's about the finances. It's about that. There is much more involved than just what happens on the grass. How have you kept improving your knowledge and improving your understanding of the game after you have achieved you know, the highest licensing and then working at the professional side? Where do you get the time or what do you look at to improve and kick on your, your development? Well, first of all, from the clear understanding that I don't know enough and I will never will. And obviously for me, that's really, really important because I will always be a learner. And I so would remain very humble to understand that you will never know enough. But at the same time, love yourself and understand that you are good enough <laughs> to do the job. Um, but having that kind of dual kind of thing, like, you know, I don't know enough. Um, it's always good to learn more. It's always good to ask questions. I'm very, very curious. I'm always, you know, trying to gather information, trying to ask questions. But at the same time, I also respect myself. And I'm like, oh, ooh, listen, I've, I've, I've come a long way. And that's also important, you know, to motivate yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, otherwise, you, you might become like a bit of paranoid that you know if you if you always think that you don't know enough and and you don't love yourself. But it's about going to CPD events, um, talking to people, um, you know, having the, this podcast. I mean, you know, while I'm answering your questions, I'm actually thinking about you know my journey, which sometimes you don't really stop and think. I've, 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 discovering yourself i mean i i would encourage people to obviously do mindfulness to do you know whatever you know yoga or any other strategy i mean if they want to go down the down the park or by the sea and just think reflect it's important that you know people sometimes give you to give themselves some breathing space that was another major thing that i didn't do when i was a younger coach that you know i always went from one session to another and i thought i was you know the more sessions you do and the more you work and the more hours you apply. And it's like, yeah, that's very, very important, of course, but also give yourself some time to reflect. Give yourself some time, give yourself some time to consolidate the learning. So reading loads of books of any topic, doesn't need to be football, any topic. Uh, I, I, I mean, my passion is in psychology and communication, so I read a lot about that and, and, and self-learning. And, and always having that desire and that appetite to... You know, to have conversations with your staff and your players. I mean, I learn a lot in the job. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's not like you have to go through a formal course. Of course, I would encourage people to go to formal courses. I would encourage people to obviously go through their qualifications. I would encourage people to learn a second language, um, because obviously then they will, you know, they will be more open-minded. And but but also as simple as having that humility to understand that you can also learn from your players. So there is reciprocal learning. So ask them questions, have breakfast with them, uh, you know, try to gather, you know, how they feel. Because if you know how they feel and how they think, you might think, oh, blame me. Maybe it's best if I do things in this other way, because actually that could work better for them, because now I know how they feel and they think. And, and you know, I would, I would challenge some coaches out there to, to actually answer this question. Do you really know what your players think and, and feel? Because if you don't, how can you coach them? <laughs> so, yeah, that's probably my answer to that. Fantastic. All right, last two for you. What part of coaching do you love the most? Um, on the grass, um, playing and communicating with the staff and the players. That's what I like the most. And then, especially on a, on a, on a, game, on a game day, uh, that buzz of being, of being in a game, and you know, and in front of loads of people, the the, the bigger crowd, the better. Uh, you know that that buzz of you know having to be um, accountable for something that I enjoy and I love doing. So yeah, probably on the grass with the staff and the players. And then your biggest piece of advice for young coaches today? Oof, um, I would say remain humble, discover yourself. And, and, and make sure that you, you know, you don't compare your journey to anyone's. It's your journey. I'm a great believer that, you know, what it's meant to be for you, it will always be for you. So don't try to compete against anyone. Just try to obviously maximize your opportunities. Seize the day. Understand that every day you've got opportunities to grow. 
uh, but also love yourself and look after yourself and you know stay fit stay, stay healthy and and you know ask your question ask this question to yourself every time every time do i really love this if i do love it then stop moaning just get on the grass and do it and if you don't love it then just get out and, and do something else you know it's not it's not a problem to change your career but it's important to do what you love what a way to finish it Edu, thank you so much fantastic thank you so much no it's been a pleasure thank you thanks so much to Edu for his time and his insight there i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did yeah the objective of that was to try and see what changes as coaching progresses from youth grassroots up until professional academies up until pro license senior football and the amazing piece of it for me was the level of consistency that actually remained throughout every level and has remained throughout Edu's development he never veered away from those principles that he said defined him as a person and the ones that stood out to me was living those values that he talked about the passion for the game that he kept referring to putting players first both in terms of welfare and in terms of development and then the real skill about that is how to remain consistent with those values keep progressing developing and then be adaptable and flexible with every group of players or with every player even as you go along and thought that was phenomenal insight from Adu that you know he is he is not only grounded by those principles and values but he is led by those principles and it it does make you think you know we all have them in certain ways and like anything in coaching it's not binary it's not one thing or the other it's just levels it's levels and you know it's really refreshing to hear a top top coach have such clarity and such direction in where he's going led by those traditional values hard work humility patience good manners all these things that and then what would finish for me was was that piece that he said football coach is a label for him it what defines him as a person is not those principles but how he behaves and then what defines you is what you do on a daily basis so you know finishing up there and looping it all back it's not just good enough to have those principles if those principles are not acted upon or if those not principles are not you doing certain things in your environment daily so we all like to think that we have these principles but are we living them every day and you know it's just a nice little reflection exercise when you go back and you think you know either from the training session or the interaction with the players did I display the values that I claim to have um, and yeah as much as we like to think we do uh, we sometimes don't and very very guilty of that myself so really really enjoyed that would love to hear your thoughts at Gary Kareen on Twitter at Gary Kareen on Instagram really appreciate you listening to the podcast helping spread the word have a great week goodbye thank you for listening to the modern soccer coach podcast for more coaching topics sessions and resources head on over to coach Kareen on Facebook or visit the website at www.modernsoccercoach.com Thank <laughs> you.